Some, someone would think I was vain by switching on the video recorder before I got up here to, uh, to introduce, to introduce Ray. Um, look, um, I didn't ask Ray for a CV or all the rest because he's been a club member for, for quite a while and uh, most of us know that he's a bloody good guy and uh, is doing a, a heap of good work. He's not over in Bali like most of you, having a holiday. He's actually over there um, doing some uh, good uh, as well. And Sue, as his uh, uh, partner, who is um, has actually uh, is here, is actually visiting Rotarium because she's a member of the uh, the Rotary Club of the ta Tasman. Ta Bali Taman. Bali Taman. Yeah, the Bali Taman. Yeah, see the French pronunciation um, club. Um, as she said, she's learning learning her Indonesian very, very quickly. Uh, so uh, that, that's great. Look, I'll, I'll, um, you don't want to hear me, you want to hear what uh, Ray's got to say. So with no further ado, I'll just get uh, Ray to come up. Thank you very much. I think for Sue and myself, and especially Sue, it's been our life's work for the last 18 months. Finally, mm -hmm. you can see up there, Rumor Sea Hat actually means a healthy home. And part of our job that we're doing in setting up the clinic and setting up these uh, rooms in the villages is to provide a tutoring course for health and hygiene, take care of skin diseases, start educating the children, looking to getting a healthy village together. We've decided with our Banjars to start in three villages. They're called Batacusini, Banyuni and As. In these three villages is about 450 families and about 1,800 children. And they live up on the top of the mountains, they live on the bottom of the mountains, they live everywhere. So without much ado, I'll go to the next slide. We we'll set up the rooms in a bank. We have our main rooms, which are in the town of Bain, and not very far from these three villages, probably about five to 10 kilometers. There is Batikun, Yas, and Benetton, and Sam. These badgers, in November, the, we had to open our clinic. We've hired a nurse. we finished three medical clinical rooms, one in each badger, plus our main rooms, where we store the medicines, and also treat some people there and do those things and the nurse works from those rooms. So, you know, when you look at the, the free medicine day, we were just overwhelmed. We had, I think, two eye doctors, we had two skin specialists, we had two regular doctors, we had two nurses, and we had four pharmacists dispensing medicine for the doctors who were bagging out prescriptions for these people. We treated over 300 people from 10.30 in the morning until, what time, 3.30, 3 o'clock, and we just had to cut it off because the doctors were exhausted, everyone was exhausted. They never stopped, they worked flat out from 10.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. And it was a great day. Also from Bali Command, from the club that Sue belongs to over there now, they brought their big bus up. You see the photo of a big Greyhound bus that's been converted into uh, clinical rooms for doing breast examinations, also for doing pap smears for women. And you'll see some of these on the slides. Can we go to the next one? When you look at the, uh, uh, this is the map of Bali, <coughs> and you look where the narrow is, this is where we're working, is down this area here, from our end around to here. On this, on this side, you're in the shadow of Mount Agung. Uh, very little rain, rains for about a month and a half a year. The rest of the year, it's bone dry. And this is what it looks like. And these people live up on these hills. Why don't they grow more food? Nothing grows up there. These people manage to grow some pumpkin and a bit of corn, and that's what they live on. They turn the corn into popcorn, 
and they live on the pumpkin and corn. And this is something which are, we will arrest with vitamins and protein pills and things like that. It's part of the reason why we've got one in every three, four women dying up there in childbirth. They start to hemorrhage because they have no protein in their system. They bleed to death in a matter of three hours, four hours. So that hopefully by with the protein powders, the protein pills, the tablets and medicines that we're giving out, we'll start to arrest that slowly with the pregnant women. You can see by the landscape here, they probably have, everyone out of their house has about a five million dollar view. Because <laughs> to put that view over on the Gold Coast here, it'd be worth millions. But they live in these tiny little huts up on the hills all around. You can see the young lady here, she walks from the top of that mountain down to the bottom twice a day, picks up 25 litres of water, puts it on her head and walks back up again. Mm. Now let me tell you, Sue's walked up that mountain. I never even made it to the top and I didn't have 25 litres of water. <laughs> and she does that twice a day. So in two of the villages now, we have got water on. We've got pumps and bores at the bottom of these two villages. We're pumping water to the main tanks at the top and then feeding out to tanks coming down the hill. And so we've got one, every tank is feeding about 10 to 15, 20 families mm -hmm. as you come down. So hopefully, this one is in Ass. <coughs> and Sue and I have been lobbying pretty hard on some people there to come up with some money now to put the water on at Ass to do the same thing to stop these women. Because even the water they're collecting down the bottom is green. <coughs> It is not nice, clean drinking water. <coughs> this is an idea, this is the banjar, banjar of ass. And here we're just sealing the deal with the banjar, with the Kapula Dusan. Uh, he's the head of the village. And you can see back here is the rooms that we've redecorated, we've revamped, we've built, and we've turned them into clinical rooms for the nurse to work from. And we have one of those in each one of these banjars now. Each one of these rooms is fixed with a desk, three chairs. It's got a examination bed, medical examination bed in each room, and it's equipped clean, running water, toilets, whatever. So it's, it's done properly. <coughs> and you can see here, um, I think we'll get to that in a minute, but Sue can pass around the newspaper clipping there. Hope Island Rotary Club is starting to get really well known. We've hit the papers twice now, this last time, we made the front page of the newspaper, <laughs> um, which came out to promote this day. The young lady here, the head on, the Muslim girl, she is now, we've hired her as a full-time nurse, she's working for us. Uh, the girl on the left is the president of the Bali Jaman Rotary Club, and on the right is Sadiari, who's the, what she is, she's the social director for the club. And you see, Hope Island is up there. Everybody knows the name. <coughs> Thanks, Sue. Okay, this is just a snapshot of the bus. In the bus is uh, Dr. Inner and three other doctors that come with the bus to do the pap smears and to do the breast examinations. I did offer to give them a hand with the breast examinations, but they didn't want to, didn't want to accept that. <laughs> but um, what a great job. They work tirelessly. These four people here are pharmacists within the three clubs between uh, Turtaganga, Gempasa, Balajaman, who all came to help. <coughs> now they, each one after they see the doctor, the doctor, if they needed medicines, would write a prescription and they go over and see these people to get their prescriptions filled. Keep going. You can see here this lineup never stopped. It was there from 10.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> When we first got there in the morning, we got there about quarter to ten. And Sue said to me, she said, oh geez, this is going to be a bit of a flop. There's nobody here. And I said, well, we advertised 10.30, start at 11, so we'll see what happens. But in a space of about 15, 20 minutes, they started filing through through the doors. <laughs> they came from everywhere. And this is the, the women's city. You can see Dr. Rinner on the left there. Before she does pap smears and uh, breast examination, she always likes to talk to all the women first and give them an introductory crash course into the reproduction tract of the 